Minasan, konnichiwa! When learning a new language, you first need to start with the alphabet. It's the same in music and that's what we're gonna do today, so let's get started! Pitch in music can sound low, high, or somewhere in the middle. It can also sound very high or very low. Pitch in music is determined by the frequency of sound wave vibration. The frequency is measured by the distance between the peaks. If you look at the picture, you will see a larger distance between the peaks in the low pitch than the peaks in the high pitch. Pitch in music is indicated by the position on the staff. The staff in music consists of five lines and four spaces. The pitch can either be notated on the lines or in the spaces of the musical staff. Each line or space of the staff represents a different pitch or a different note name. When pitches are too high or too low to be notated within the staff, we notate them above and below the staff. To make the notation clearer and easier to read, we use the ledger lines to write the notes. If the pitch sounds lower, it will be notated lower on the staff. If it sounds higher, it will be notated higher on the staff. Giving each note a name allows musicians to read music, play it, sing it, or communicate about it. To name the pitches, we use the first seven letters of the Roman alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. There are far more than seven different pitches used in music, so what do we do when we get to G and we try to name the next pitch? We go back to A and repeat the pattern. We now know that we use the first seven letters of the alphabet to name the pitches, but how do we know the exact name of all these pitches? In order to do that, we need to make sure to first identify the clef which the music is notated in. A treble clef, also called a G clef, sits on the second line of the staff. Therefore, the note on the second line is called G. Some instruments that use the treble clef are violin, flute, trumpet, and clarinet. The treble clef is also used for voices such as soprano, alto, and mezzo-soprano. Now that we know the letter name of one pitch in treble clef, we can identify the rest using the first seven letters of the alphabet. Above G we have A, then B, then C, and then we keep following the alphabetic order as we go higher on the staff. The same thing happens when we go lower on the staff, but this time the order of the alphabet is reversed. From G we go down to F, then E, D, and finally C. When moving up on the staff, we read and name the pitches in alphabetic order. When moving down on the staff, it's the opposite and we read them in a reverse alphabetical order. This is true for all pitches and all different clefs. Now that we know how to name the pitches on the staff, we apply the same process to the pitches on the ledger lines. We know that a note on the top line is F. Above F will be G, then A, then B, and so on. The same goes for pitches on the ledger lines below the staff. Remember that because we are moving lower on the staff, the alphabetical order is reversed. Let's now look into the pitches of the bass clef. The bass clef, also called F clef, sits on the fourth line of the staff. Therefore, the note on the fourth line is called F. Some instruments that use the bass clef are cello, double bass, bassoon, and trombone. Voices that use the bass clef are baritone and bass. Because we know that the pitch of the fourth line is F, we can now name the rest of the pitches in bass clef. Above F, we have G and then A. The same thing happens when we move lower on the staff, but this time in the reverse alphabetical order. From F, we go down to E, then D, C, B, A, and lastly to the G that sits on the first line of the staff. The process is the same for the pitches in the bass clef that use the ledger lines. We know that a node on the top line is A, above A will be B, then C, then D, and so on. The same goes for pitches on the ledger lines below the staff. Remember again to reverse the alphabetical order. Now that you know how to read the node letter names in treble and bass clef, 
you can easily read notes on the grand staff. The grand staff is a combination of two staves put together. Notice that the staves are connected with the vertical line and the brace. That means that the music is read at the same time in both clefs. The grand staff is used for instruments that need to play a wide range of pitches such as piano, harp, organ and marimba. The grand staff usually consists of treble and bass clef. The note letter names stay the same as before. The second line in the treble clef is G and the fourth line in the bass clef is F. Notice that when we add all other notes in treble and bass clef, they meet in the middle of the staff, where both clefs share C pitch. This C is called the middle C, or C4, as it is the fourth C from left on a piano keyboard. If you now understand how to name the pitches, but it sometimes takes a little bit too long to do the process, don't worry. Have you heard of mnemonic devices? They're a great tool for better memorization, and here is how you can use them in music. To memorize the pitches on the lines of the treble clef, you can use sentence Every good boat does float. Notice that the first letter of every word is the letter name for each note. To memorize the pitches of the spaces in the treble clef, you can use the word face. It might help to remember that face rhymes space. There are mnemonic devices for bass clef too. To memorize the pitches on the lines of the bass clef, you can use the sentence Good burritos don't fall apart. For spaces of bass clef, you can use the sentence All cows eat grass. Remember that if the mnemonic devices in this video don't work for you, you can always make up new ones on your own. Congratulations! Now you know how to name the pitches in the bass and the treble clef. If you like this video and find it helpful, make sure to like, share and subscribe and leave a comment below if you have any questions.